Hi, I'm Garrett with IDC Woodcraft and I'd like to welcome you to my channel. This video is about how to make this Christmas block literally from the ground up, step by step. This video is a result of one of my viewers actually requesting me to do this video when he saw this block in one of my other videos. It's a Podman made that request. So what I want to do, since I make videos for CNC beginners, is I am literally going to take you step by step through the entire process, coming up with the concept and bringing in the text, getting the text adjusted in a lot of ways that you didn't realize you can do, and then bringing in bitmaps and importing vectors over them and, and adjusting the vectors properly. Okay, so we are now in VCarve. And this is what your screen is going to look like when you open up a new file. And the first thing we need to do is set up our material size. So when we do that, we come up to here to job size. Now we know ours is 10 by 5.5 by 1.5 inches thick. And we have inches selected. So that's all taken care of. And the next thing we need to do is make sure that we are working from the position that we want. The job datum right here. So it's easiest to work off a of center. So just pick the center area and we're good to go so click OK and let's start thinking about our design we are putting Merry Christmas in the middle with a font that we want we're gonna put Holly in the upper left hand corner and we're gonna put Christmas lights in the right hand corner so the first thing that we are going to do is deal with the font so what we want to do is come over here into the create vectors and we want to draw text so you click that button and it's going to pop up a text field in the screen first thing we want to do is find our font I like the U full organic and so let's just enter Merry Christmas and get it centered into the job somewhat that's good enough we are going to work with it a little bit. We can see there's a lot of space on the letter between the words and the letters are kind of crunched together. So we are going to fix that. But not just yet. The first thing we want to do is jump over to Google and get our bitmap images. So we are now in Google and I want you to take a look at what I've typed into the search bar. Whatever image you want to get, you type it in, like Christmas lights. Then I put in images and drawings. And what this will do will give you very simple drawings that you can work with so you don't have to do a lot of stuff. Now, we are going to go with Christmas lights, but not that one. It's a little swirly. It's going to be harder to work with. We'll take that one. We're going to right-click it, and we're going to save images. You click save images and give it the name that you want. This we're going to call CL. We'll click OK and go back over to our VCarve. Now I want to bring in our bitmap under File Operations. You just click it and you go to the directory that you downloaded on. Double click it and bring it in and there are the Christmas lights. Then I've already brought the holly in so I'm just going to go get that file and click it. And that's pretty big. So we're going to adjust that and move these things into the positions generally that we want. Holly's in the upper left and the Christmas lights in the upper right. We're going to shrink it down to a more appropriate size and get it over there. So let's start focusing on this text now. You see we've got a lot of uh, the letters are close together. This M is a little tight right there. And uh, it can just be kind of hard to work with all this and the words between the two are spaced out so you see this under create vectors this is edit the text spacing curve it's a really neat tool that they have where it'll allow you to adjust the spacing between the words and the letters so when you have the tool just clicked you can just click between a letter and a word and you'll make an adjustment if you hold down the uh, shift bar it'll space out. So what we're going to do is bring Merry Christmas together and then we're going to spread out the letters a little bit to loosen this up a tad. And I like that. So let's go ahead and work on our first vector, the holly, and let's get it oriented about where we want to and get the size right. And then let's do that with the uh, Christmas lights. We're going to move it around and 
I want the cord to run off the end. So I'm using the cursors to move this thing around, the cursor buttons. Now you see that last light. I am not going to use that. So we're going to cut that off just because it's kind of hard to get the cord to go off the end. So now we're going to uh, trace the bitmap function. So you do that under uh, create vectors, this little brown whatever it is. You click that. And now you see that VCarve has uh, taken this bitmap and grayscaled it, but we don't have all our lights. We want to get all the lights in here. So what you're going to do is come over to the uh, type of tracing to use. We're not going to talk about color or black and white right now. We want to stay in black and white. What we're going to do is adjust the threshold. So this little slider, watch what happens when I slide it around to the image. You can see it's getting darker. I'll go to slide it to the left, it gets lighter. We want to get it darker so we have all our bulbs in there and filled up. So we have nice, we can create nice solid vectors around there. And this looks good. So we're going to preview it and everything's there. So we click apply and close. And we got our bitmap traced. Uh, we're going to go to our holly now and do the exact same thing. And so now we have it. Now, up in layers, when you brought that bitmap in, it uh, created a bitmap layer. You want to turn it off by just clicking that light bulb thing. So you can work with the drawings without the bitmaps. We're going to clean this up a little bit, get rid of that junk. So here's what we're going to do. We've got double lines here. We need single lines. The berries don't look very good. And the veins and the leaves can be uh, redone a little bit better. So we're going to just delete those out. And we're going to start cleaning this up. And the way we're going to do this is by adding an arc. So we can start trimming some lines out of the stuff. So that's under Create Vectors. So you start just pick your first point where you want it, second point on your arc, and then you just create the arc so the berries can kind of fit inside of it. And we're going to do this to all three of them. Let's do a nice little arc right there, and then do it down here real quick. Okay, so we got that. So it's time to start trimming. We're going to use the Edit Objects Cut feature. And we're just going to start cutting away all the stuff we don't want. You can just hold the button down and ride right over the line that you want to trim out, or use your left mouse button. And we're going to cut that out and I'm going to quicken this up a little bit. And there we go. We have it. So now we're going to add the veins into the leaf. So we are going to use the curve command again, the arc command. And I'm going to create the first arc just to make it, give it a little character. And then we're going to create the second arc. And we're going to go from point to point. Now you need to have your snaps turned on in order for those vectors to connect with each other while you're drawing them. And then we're just going to bring that out a little bit and make it look like a vein on a leaf. And that's pretty good. Now you see I'm clicking each one and only one of them highlights. We need to create a single vector out of this. So shift and click and we are going to go join vectors with a line. If you use with a smooth curve in this case, it's going to give you a really funny shape. So click it with a line and now we are good to go. So click the vector again, hold your shift button down, and drag from the very middle button. And that's going to allow you to copy it to, and move the new copy around. So we've just moved them around and we are going to adjust them by using the outer buttons on these uh, little highlights, the, the, the grab that it has. And then use a cursor button to move it around a little bit. And we'll get this one adjusted as well. So we're almost there. The leaves are good. Now we've got to take, you know, we got to trim out a little bit right here. Missed something. Zootalo, I missed one. All right, we're going to draw circles. We're just going to create new berries. And we're just going to put circles right over where the current berries are. Get the three circles in there, and then we will delete the unnecessary stuff. So far, so good. So you just click it and hit the delete button. Do a little window delete, get rid of that funny looking one. And look at this, we're looking pretty good. We just need to tweak this around a little bit to make them form into the berries a little bit more. So I highlight it and move it around with the cursor button. This one we'll probably have to rotate a little bit to nestle between the berries. So we'll bring it there and then we'll cursor it over. Yeah fix that a little bit better. There we go. I like that. Hope you like it. Let's go to the lights. 
Okay, so we got a lot of junk in the middle of the light, so let's just get rid of that. I'm going to speed things up a little bit to, so you don't get too bored. Looking good. So I am going to get rid of this light, and we got to do an adjustment on the cord. To get rid of the light or trim things out, you just draw a line right through the vectors you want to separate, because right now it's all one vector. So we're just going to draw a line between the, uh, by the ends. And we are going to start to trim things away so we can get this spacing taken care of. Because my end mill, a 16th inch end mill, is not going to fit in that slot. So we have to trim these away to create two separate vectors on the right side of the cord. So I'm going to go back to the scissors. Now you have to get the original vector first if you want to do this. If you don't, then you're going to delete the whole thing. So just come across, trim that out, get rid of that junk, and we'll clean that one up. Now we can move the cord out. You can see when I click it, it's a completely separate vector. We're going to use the cursor buttons to get a little bit of space there so my tool can move through there. We're going to just make sure by getting a measure on there, I'm going to show you the measuring tool. Right down here, under Edit Objects, that's Measure the Distance. You can measure all kinds of stuff with this. We're just going for distance. So click that, and then go on one line, and basically hold your left key down, and just hover over the, the next line. You'll see that it gives you a distance. Now we have a distance of 0.1. And we have a 16th inch end mill, which is a 0.0625, so our tool is going to make it through there. We are in good shape. Now we need to close these vectors back up. And the way you do that, there's a couple ways you can do it, but I'm going to do it with the node way. So what I did is I selected the vector and pushed N for Nancy, or node, and I just grabbed a little tab on the end of the, the uh, line. I can't grab that one, so let's grab the other one. And just swing it right around. And we're just going to cross over or touch the vector with it. And then we can cut it away. And now that one is connected, and we're going to cut that away. Oops, what happened there? Oh, what happened was the line did not cross or touch. So what we're going to do is join these vectors. But let's see, I'm going to just try to snip just to make sure. Yeah, it's, I didn't fix it. I thought I could tweak that over. So we're going to join vectors with a line like we did before, and now it's one vector. All you have to do is get your cut and cut out that extra vector, and there we are. Let's get rid of these two little guys right there. And we are in good shape. Now look, every once in a while you're gonna run into stuff like that. So that's gonna be cleaned up. That's gonna create a strange little tool path. So you just click the vector and hit your N button. Create a window from left to right, and that'll just select the objects or uh, you can just hover over, and then you hit D, and it'll delete them. Now, I'm going to speed this up just to fix these things. Okay, I'm back. All right, we are ready to do our tool path. So this is the button you use to get over there, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into Pocket Command. We want to pocket everything here. So first of all, I want to... Uh, set my depth, which is 0.05, to select the tool, which is a 1 16th end mill, and now we're going to select everything at once. V-Carver is smart enough to know that things on the inside will not get carved of, uh, if they're on the inside of other objects, such as the thing in the center of the A or the circle in the center of the E, and I am just generating this now to see how it looks. And we can see if we need to fix anything, so that's looking good. Letters are looking good. Um, a is looking a little funny there. So we're going to have to open that up a little bit. And we're going to have to go back to 2D by pressing that. So we can fix that up. Now, right now, the words is one single whole vector. So what we need to do is turn those into vectors. The words actually aren't vectors, they're words. We are going to use the weld command under edit objects after we have it selected. When you hit that, that's going to turn it all into vectors. Now you're going to get a little alarm. That's okay. It's just telling you there's some vectors that can't cross over to others, like the holes and the E's, things like that. So let's fix this A up just a little bit. We're going to select now the inside of the A and hit N for node. 
And now all we have to do is just drag that node down a little bit by clicking on it and just moving it around. And it looks, I think the C was a little tight just from what I could see too. So I'm just going to open it up just a little bit. And let's switch back over to our tool paths. Look at our split screen. And we're going to recalculate because we change things. You always have to recalculate and regenerate our tool path. And the C looks good. No, nothing happened. You can see if you look in the 2D image, Merry Christmas was not highlighted. So we have to re-highlight everything. Go back in the tool path and re-highlight. And then click Calculate again and generate the new tool path. And let's take a look at the A. Look, the tool went all the way through. So we fixed that up nice. This is really good. We have this. This is looking really good. Okay, that's it. If this video was helpful, please give it a like and happy CNC and I will talk to you next time.